Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Shawls. Today we have our final story in the saga of King Harold, the first section of Viking Tales by Jenny Hall. And we're going to end with King Harold expanding his kingdom even further. This is King Harold Goes West Overseas. Now, many men hated King Harold. Many a man said, Why should he put himself up for king of all of us? He is no better than I am. Am I not a king's son as well as he? Are not many of us king's sons? I will not kneel before him and promise to be his man. I will not pay him taxes. I will not have his earl sitting over me. The good old days have gone. This Norway has become a prison. I will go away and find some other place. So hundreds of men sailed away. Some went to France and got land and lived there. Big Rolf Goafoot and all his men sailed up the great French river and won a battle against the French king himself. There was no way to stop the flashing of his battle axes but to give him what he wanted. So the king made Rolf a duke and gave him broad lands and gave him the king's own daughter for wife. Rolf called his country Normandy for old Norway. He ruled it well and was a great lord and his sons' sons after him were kings of England. Other Norsemen went to Ireland and England and Scotland. They drew up their boats on the river banks. The people ran away from them and gathered into great armies that marched back to meet the Vikings in battle. Sometimes the Norsemen lost, but oftener they won, so that they got land and lived in these countries. Their houses sat in these strange lands like warriors' camps, and the Norsemen went among their new neighbors with hanging swords and spears in hand, ever ready for fight. There are many islands north of Scotland. They are called the Orkneys and the Shetlands. They have many good harbors for ships. They are little and rocky and bare of trees. Wild seabirds scream around them. On some of them, a man can stand in the middle and see the ocean all about him. Now the Vikings sailed to these islands and were pleased. It is like always being in a boat, they said. This shall be our home. So it went until all the lands round about were covered with Vikings. Norse carved and painted houses brightened the hillsides. Viking ships sailed all the seas and made harbor in every river. Norsemen's thralls plowed the soil and planted crops and herded cattle, and gold flowed into their master's treasure chests. Norse warriors walked up and down the land, and no man dared to say them nay. These men did not forget Norway. In the summers they sailed back there and harried the coast. They took gold and grain and beautiful cloth back to their homes. In Norway they left burning houses and weeping women. Every summer King Harold had out his ships and men and hunted these Vikings. There are many little islands about Norway. They have crags and caves and deep woods. Here the Vikings hid when they saw King Harold's ships coming. But Harold ran his boat into every creek and fjord and hunted in every cave and through all the woods and among the crags. He caught many men. But most of them got away and went home laughing at Harold. Then they came back the next summer and did the same deeds over again. At last, King Harold said, There's but one thing to do. I must sail to these western islands and whip these robbers in their own homes. So he went with a great number of ships. He found as brave men as he had brought from Norway. These Vikings had brought their old courage to their new homes. King Harold's fine ships were scarred by Viking stones and scorched by Viking fire. The shields of Harold's warriors had dents from Viking blows. Many of those men carried Viking scars all their lives and many of King Harold's warriors walked the long, hard road to Valhalla and feasted there with some of these very Vikings that had died in King Harold's battles. But after many hard fights on land and sea, after many men had died and many had fled away to other lands, King Harold won and made these men that were yet in the islands take the oath, and he left his earls to rule over them. Then he went back to Norway. He has done more than he vowed to do, people said. He has not only whipped the Vikings, but he has got a new kingdom west overseas. Then they talked of that dream that his mother had. King Harold was that great tree, they said. 
The trunk was red with the blood of his many battles, but higher up the limbs were fair and green like this good time of peace. The topmost branches are white, because Harold will live to be an old man, just as that tree spread out until all of Norway was in its shade in even more lands, so Harold is king of all this country and of the western islands. The many branches of that tree are the many sons of Harold's, who shall be earls and kings in Norway and their sons after them for hundreds of years. And that is King Harold Goes West Overseas. The conclusion of Harold's saga, showing him branch out past Norway and following the Vikings and bringing them in even the Western Islands under his rule. This is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening.